Hello, hey guys, it's me, Mr. Lee. Um, now it's time for us to have some sort of uh, online tutorials on biology during this uh, class suspension period. You should have got your notes at home, right? Uh, if so, please take it out and we will start from uh, talking about the general plan of digestive system and then all the way to um, digestion, absorption of food in human and then assimilation and digestion which would cover everything uh, about nutrition in human part 2 uh, of your notes okay so if you guys ready let's go hello everyone let us continue from where we left off before the school's expansion um, still remember we dissected a rat and we examined its digestive system which is actually quite similar to the human one now please spend some time to revise um, all the structures uh, that I've highlighted with you in the lesson on page 7 of your notes Nutrition in Human Part 2, especially those structures that are involved in digestion and absorption of food. We have also mentioned that digestion of food is required because humans have to make the ingested food smaller, simpler, and soluble for absorption through the small intestine into the blood. And digestion is classified into two types, namely physical digestion and chemical digestion. Physical digestion involves mechanical actions that break down the food into smaller pieces, although by means of physical digestion can never, remember, can never make the food simple enough to be absorbed, but this can greatly increase the surface area of food for the other type of digestion, that is chemical digestion, to take place more efficiently. Chemical digestion involves the action of digestive enzymes found in various digestive juices secreted from different glands. By the action of Digestive enzymes. Food can be completely broken down into simplest form, ready for absorption in the alimentary canal. Now, let us have a closer look at the digestive processes that take place in our alimentary canal. Now, back to your notes, page 8. We'll start from the digestion process that take place in the mouth cavity first. In your mouth, the presence of teeth can help digesting the food physically by means of mastication or we can simply call it chewing. By chewing a food, the ingested food can be made smaller and just now I've already told you this can also increase the surface area. Of food for the action of digestive enzymes and there's actually one type of digestive enzyme that can be found in the mouth cavity and is known as salivary amylase. It is a part of the saliva secreted from the salivary gland. This kind of digestive enzyme can help break down the starch in food into maltose which is a kind of disaccharide. Remember, disaccharides are still too large to be absorbed by the human body. After the food is partially broken down in the mouth, it is then swallowed through the pharynx into the esophagus, and then the food will pass along the esophagus into the stomach where the food will be further digested. Our stomach is actually made up of muscle layers. And this layer of muscles can contract and relax, creating churning action. This churning action can help break the food into smaller pieces. And this is a kind of physical digestion. It can also help to mix the food with the digestive enzymes found in the stomach. 
in the stomach, there is also another type of digestion, chemical digestion. Gastric juice is secreted from the gastric gland, where it contains three components. The first one, protease. This is a kind of enzyme that can help to break down protein into peptides or amino acids. Now, still remember, amino acid is the basic unit of protein. While peptides are actually short chains of amino acid. If the protein is broken down into amino acid, it is then ready for absorption. All right, the, sef the second component in the gastric juice is the hydrochloric acid which has a pH value of two. The hydrochloric acid found in the gastric juice is not for melting the food. Again, it is not for melting or dissolving the food. Instead, it can help to kill most of the bacteria in our ingested food due to its low pH. Also, as protease cannot work in a pH value which is too high, so hydrochloric acid can provide an acidic medium which can help the protease to work in an optimum pH value. Finally, mucus can also be found in gastric juice because the stomach is made up of muscles and muscles are made up of protein so the protease found in the gastric juice is possible to digest uh, the protein found in the muscle layer of the stomach that's why in order to protect the muscles of the stomach from being self-digested the mucus can cover up the inner surface of the stomach preventing the stomach from self-digestion from the protease. After the food is partially digested in the stomach, it will then pass to the first part of the small intestine, known as the duodenum. And here, the food will be mixed with three types of digestive juices. The first one, secreted from this part, we call this pancreas. Which can secrete pancreatic juice. The second type of digestive juice, which is produced in the liver, we call this bile. And this bile, after produced from the liver, will be stored in the gallbladder. The third kind of digestive juice can be found throughout the small intestine. We call this intestinal juice. Okay, now we'll have a look at the three digestive juices separately. The first digestive juice is pancreatic juice. I would call it the most powerful digestive juice among the three types found in the duodenum because it contains all the three major enzymes that are required in digestion of food. The first one, amylase. It has a similar function as the one found in saliva. It can help to break down starch into maltose chemically. The second type, lipase. Now remember, 
Pancreatic juice is the only digestive juice in our human body where lipase can be found. And lipase can help to break down fat into glycerol and fatty acids. The third type of digestive enzyme is protease. Having similar function as the one found in stomach, it can help to break down protein into amino acid as well as peptide further into amino acids. Finally, as the enzymes found in the small intestine require an alkaline medium to work, that's why in all the three types of digestive juices found in the small intestine, sodium hydrogen carbonate can be found because it can neutralize the exit from the gastric juice and also provide an alkaline medium for the digestive enzymes to work. Now, the second type of digestive juice is uh, produced from the liver, known as bile. After production from the liver, this bile will be stored temporarily in the gall bladder. The bile salts found in bile are not enzymes. Instead, the bile salt can help to break down lipid into smaller oil droplets by an action known as emulsification, which is a kind of physical digestion. And then these small oil droplets having an increased surface area will then be further broken down into fatty acids and glycerol chemically by lipase, which is found in the pancreatic juice. Okay, so bile salt can help emulsify fat into droplets so that the surface area of the food is increased. This is a kind of physical digestion. Now, in the bile, sodium hydrogen carbonate can also be found and it has the same function as the one found in pancreatic juice. Through the small intestine, there is intestinal gland which can secrete intestinal juice. Again, this digestive juice, same as bile, it has no enzymes. It contains mainly sodium hydrogen carbonate, again to neutralize the uh, acidity uh, from the gastric juice and provide an alkaline medium for the enzymes to work. Now at this stage, the starch that is found in our ingested food is broken down into maltose, while protein is either broken down into amino acids or peptides. And lipids, with the help of pancreatic juice and bile, are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. And of these, amino acids, fatty acids, and glycerol are small and simple enough to be absorbed. However, for the maltose and peptides, they have to be further digested into even simpler form before they can be absorbed. And how to digest these disaccharides and peptides? The secret actually lies on the inner surface of the small intestine. With a closer look at the inner surface of the small intestine, we can see cells like this with some tiny projections. We call these cells epithelial cells. And on the surface, outermost surface of the epithelial cell, it's a cell membrane. 
where some digestive enzymes actually attached on the cell membrane of this epithelial cell. When food molecule contact with the enzymes on the epithelial cells, the food could be chemically digested. Just to remind you that these enzymes are membrane bound, meaning that these enzymes are attached to the cell membrane but will not be secreted out. So, what kind of digestive enzymes can be found on the cell membrane of the epithelial cells? The first one is carbohydrates. It is actually a collective term to describe the enzyme that can break down carbohydrate. Okay, this is actually an enzyme to break down carbohydrates chemically. And the carbohydrates found on the cell membrane of the epithelial cells can help to break down disaccharides, for example, maltose, into monosaccharides. And also, proteins can be found attached on the cell membrane, and these proteins can help to break down the remaining peptides into amino acids. Finally, all the protein can be broken down into amino acids or the carbohydrates can be broken down into monosaccharides and all lipids can be broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. And these end products are ready for absorption. Okay, that's it for the uh, digestion of human. Yeah, that's the end of digestion in human. I hope you guys pay attention in class. And if you have any question, there will be a um, live uh, Q&A session to be um, held next week. So uh, please attend the session uh, according to the time that I've sent you through e-class if you have any questions. Okay, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.